Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Be Bold and Everywhere podcast. I'm your host, Mike Heffron, and today I want to talk about measuring creativity. Is it possible? Can we even do it? Can the left brain critique and understand the right brain? Let's find out. As a fan of creativity, I've never really thought of how to measure it outside of its effectiveness when it comes to a specific function. When it comes to art, it's more of a quality of taste, right? It's more of a perspective. It's more of a flavor. Now, when it comes to this whole thing, social media, advertising, output, the function of creativity, right? People want to see hard numbers. People want to know, does this creative work? Is it creative enough? Does creativity even matter? And there's a quote by Stephen Vogel, the chief creative officer of Ogilvy and Mathers, Germany. He said, nothing is more efficient than creative advertising. Creative advertising is more memorable, longer lasting, works with a smaller media spend, and builds a community faster. I think we can all agree to that, at least the creatives I'm sure would love to agree with that. However, there's no firm evidence of how creativity affects consumer behavior. And there's even less evidence of how the creativity itself affects the sales revenue outcome. But for your entertainment today, we have a study. Werner J. Renartz and Peter Safford, I'm sorry if I butchered these names, published a study in the Harvard Business Review back in 2013. Their findings concluded that creative ads are definitely more effective than non-creative ads. And actually, the more creative the ad was, the more effective it became. But the question still stands, how do we measure this creativity? Well, first, we have to define what creativity is. And if we look at it through a psychological point of view, they define it as the capacity for divergent thinking. Now, what does that mean? Well, we have a problem because trying to define creativity is a lot like trying to define marketing. Everything is vague at best. But we'll look at a few things here. The most well-known test of creativity are the Torrance Tests of Creativity, created by Ellis Paul Torrance, a psychologist. These tests were designed to assess an individual's capacity for creativity, namely divergent thinking. The basis of this test is built around scoring five different dimensions of creativity. We have originality, fluency, elaboration, abstractness, and the resistance of premature closure. It's important to state that the Torrance tests are not one test. It's Torrance tests, as in multiple. So there's different versions. There's some for adults. There's some for children. But we're looking at the overview here. Let me give you an example. So uh, an example given in the article is, let's say, the question is, how many uses are there for a paperclip? Your fluency rating is based on the number of responses you give to this question. Originality scores for how uncommon or unusual the answers are. Elaboration is the amount of detail given behind each answer. Abstractness measures the degree to which these answers divert from something concrete, right? And resistance to premature closure, this weird one here is, the ability to consider a variety of factors when processing information. Now, in the early 2000s, this test was adapted by Indiana University researcher Robert Smith and his colleagues. They wanted to apply a similar type of test to advertising specifically. So here, we're actually measuring the creative output itself rather than the creator. For this, they also adapted the five dimensions. So here, our scorable dimensions are originality, flexibility, elaboration, synthesis, and artistic value. For the sake of accuracy, I'm going to read from the study itself to give you a direct depiction here. So the originality of an ad is measured on the inclusion of premise or elements that are rare and surprising. Now, they give an example of a Coca-Cola ad called Happiness Factory that visualized the interior of a vending machine as a happiness factory. Flexibility scores on how smoothly one can link the featured products to a range of different uses. Elaboration scores on introducing unexpected details or extending simple ideas to make them more complex. And I love the example they give here of the five gum commercials. A lot of you guys that are my age will remember these. They, they really stood out. They had that Matrix cyberpunk style. And this is an example of elaboration where one uh, spearmint flavored commercial was a, a man who walks into this you know, giant arena and he's submerged in tiny metal balls that are tingling and vibrating to kind of represent that tingling feeling. Or the one where there's a woman indoor skydiving over an entire floor of hair dryers. 
to represent like the heat of the cinnamon flavor. The dimension of synthesis, now this is scored on blending or connecting normally unrelated objects and uses of the product. Artistic value is scored on quality and aesthetics. So these are aesthetically pleasing verbal elements, visual elements, sound elements within the advertisement itself. So to conduct this study, Renarts and Safford, once again apologizing if I'm butchering these, they asked a panel of consumers to rate 437 different ad campaigns based around those dimensions that we just went through. Each campaign would then receive an overall score based upon the average of all those dimensions. Once they obtained these scores, they would then look at the advertisement campaign itself, measure its spending budget, and measure its impact on sales revenue. The panelists were asked to give a score on each dimension from a scale of one to seven. The average score for all the campaigns that were tested was a 2.98, pretty low. In fact, only 11 out of the 437 ads received a score above a five. So like we said, they take these scores, they're looking at the ad budgets, they're looking at the impact on sales, right? And they find a euro invested, this was in Germany, remember, a euro invested in a higher scoring ad on the creative scale nearly doubled the sales impact of the campaign. Additionally, they found that the creativity score in relation to that sales impact was relatively small initially, like day one, right? But as the campaign continued, it became more and more effective, almost compounding. They had another interesting discovery here, and that was that all of the dimensions did not carry equal weight in relation to that impact. So all of them have a positive outcome. So the more creative on any dimension, the better it was compared to less creative ones. But of all the dimensions, elaboration had by far the largest impact on that sales revenue, followed by artistic value and then originality. Flexibility, fourth place, synthesis, a distant fifth place. In fact, synthesis was half as effective as even flexibility, the fourth place winner. Now, while elaboration is the strongest, as they find, the study finds that most ad agencies don't focus on elaboration. In fact, most of the campaigns are built around originality and artistic value. If we're taking the study as fact, let's say, we find here that creativity does not live on one dimension alone. So they factored in combinations of these dimensions to figure out you know, which pair of dimensions were the most effective. And so here is where originality jumps from third place all the way up to first place, because all of the strongest combinations contained originality as part of that dimensional pair. The strongest pair being elaboration and originality. Let's dig in a little bit because the study found that certain product categories allowed for a more creative, exploratory ad campaign and, and thus more effective. Now, products that were more functional, cleaning supplies, hygienic supplies, the ads had to focus on the factual end result, right? They had to focus on the effectiveness of this cleaning product. Whereas something like coffee, soda, gum, they could take more of a creative license because it's more of an experiential product. So more creativity equals better, right? More creative equals better sales results. Not always. The study finds that there's widely different results for each product category. However, most companies are actually underinvesting in creative and leaving money on the table. The study here finds. Now, just to remind you, this test was conducted in 2005 to 2010, analyzed and published in 2013. And they were only testing for television advertisements. So these are TV commercials. How would this apply to a more modern look at advertising, especially when we have social media? Now, social media creative is, is faster. It's less expensive. It's easier to test. Now, one could argue that the volume of social creative demand is balancing out with that budget of creating just one really great television ad. But I feel there's also a difference in the expectation. Like, let's look at the dimension artistic value here for a second. Social media can have high artistic value, but we've seen the effectiveness of UGC, which is almost purposefully low quality production. Something like this would rarely be put on television, but on social flies all the time. Now, why is that? I posit that there is a sixth dimension of creativity when it comes to online advertising, maybe even television as well, which is relatability. 
That's where UGC wins. Now, something should still be original. It should still be elaborative. Is that a word? Whatever, you, go, you know what I'm saying. But I believe that this calls into question some of these forms of creativity and how, if we even wanted to, we would test the creativity of social. I was also curious how AI would actually score on the Torrance test of creativity. Because if you think about it, it could give a lot of answers, right? So high fluency, high originality based purely upon the fact that it can give so many. So it would definitely have unusual responses compared to a human and definitely high elaboration because it can pad answers all day. And so this is when I found another study. This is published in the Journal of Creativity in December last year. University of Montana conducted some exploratory research giving the Torrance test of creativity to ChatGPT. Can you guess what the results were? Drum roll, please. ChatGPT scored in the top 1% for creativity. Top 1% originality, top 1% fluency, and even though it wasn't in the 1% for flexibility, very high. So they conclude that even in its current state, AI is matching human levels of creativity. But the paper does say that they're encouraging continued research, especially as AI continues to advance. Well, there you have it. You know, we're out of a job. AI has finally caught up. It's just as creative as we are. I guess we should get into a trade or something, right? I'm going to push back a little bit. Y'all could think it's salty, but I think at a creative context, even though we're scoring high on the test, the human eye is a different judge. At its core, AI is unoriginal, right? Because it's simply pulling from things that already exist. Now, you could argue back that humans are the same way if you want to go existential with it. But if we're using elaboration from our second test, from our test on advertising, I feel like AI is severely lacking in this capacity. In artistic value, that's up for opinion. Some people like AI art, some people hate AI art. Art itself is divisive. And if we're adding in my sixth element of relatability, I don't know how relatable AI can really be. Now, how do you test if you are a creative person? How creative are you, right? Well, you can go take the Torrance test, right? You can go sign up for that. But I would say, let the world be the judge because as I just stated, art is divisive. Some modern art, people love, people, people loud it as a creative breakthrough. Other people absolutely hate it. So there's no, there's no solving for this subjectivity of creative. Now, if we're talking from a business standpoint, right? Advertising, it comes down to the target audience. How effective is that creative at reaching that audience? And when we're applying the social lens to it, we can really niche down. So how creative are you in delivering a message to that specific audience? So that's a look at how to measure creativity a couple ways there. I'm gonna drop the link to some of these studies in the YouTube description here. If you're listening not on YouTube, you can follow me on YouTube, Mike Heffron. You can also follow me on socials at Mike Heffron. Every day on Instagram, I try to post a creative prompt to help everybody get a little more creative, start lifting those creative brains. I'll see you next time.